Hi, I'm Seth, and if you clicked on this video, you have probably heard about the Infusion engine. Infusion is the new engine currently in development by Behemoth Interactive in order to replace Real Virtuality as their common base platform for their future games. Real Virtuality engine has been running Arma since Operation Flashpoint, although in different versions it has been upgraded and worked on from Real Virtuality 1 up until Arma 3's Real Virtuality 4. Many fans of the Arma series has been patiently waiting for many years of the next iteration of Arma, and we know a portion of Bohemian Interactive staff is most likely assigned to the development of Infusion in order to make Arma 4 down the line. So today we're going to look at what we know about Infusion and the future of Arma. Throughout the blogs of Behemi Interactive, there has been sprinkled hidden breadcrumbs in form of puzzle piece image files. They have been found in various blogs, and when you find them all and combine them together, you get screenshots of the Infusion engine at work. I believe all images are now posted, so what can we see in these images? Well, image one, it's a bright sunny day. We can see the road going across here, green woodlands. There's a small pond as well as a farmhouse over the top of the hill there. You can also see a hunting tower. And I think this looks very reminiscent of Chernerus, to be honest. Outside the viewport, you can see a prefab library. From this explorer window, you can see that there are pink objects available. You can also use the search tool. These look a lot like assets, like trees and foliage that you can place down in the world. On the top left window, we have a perspective. This probably changes the perspective of the viewport. We have a camera button and we have a shading and placement. I suspect we're going to have some basic settings for each of these icons that are easily available. Uh, higher up you have a world icon and a controller icon. What do you do? I, I can only guess. Give a comment about what you think. Let's move on to the next image. Image 2. In this image we can see clearly a farmhouse. There's a tractor in front. On the hill in the background we can see a town a church tower, and a tower that looks a lot like that tower you see in Starry Sobor in Chernerus. In the tools there are more assets, and the, on the top a new tool looks like a ruler and a magic tool or something like an eraser. Next image, image 3. In this image we can see a village. There's a very distinct church that has a orthodox Christian style. And this tells me this is more East European maybe. On the right hand side of the window we can see a hierarchy menu uh, or a browser like we have in other engines like Unreal. Here I assume you see all of your assets that you have placed down in the world. Um, on the bottom we now have new symbols that looks like environment based or like surfaces or textures or other things like that. Image 4. In this image we can see a house or an estate with a gate next to a dirt road. With the sunset, in this image I think it looks very good to be honest, graphically. On the bottom we have a new window called Resource Browser 2, implying that there is a Research Browser 1. And what resources are and what they do I'm not really sure of, but I think we're talking about textures and stuff like that. Image 5, in this image there's a car, and I think this is almost 100% the Sarka 120 model from DC. Just look at the comparison uh, on this 3D model. We also have a, an apple tree, a water pump, and a house in the background. On the bottom we can confirm there's a resource browser 1. Since the positions of these windows are constantly changing between these screenshots, I think it's safe to say that the engine layout is customizable, which is a great thing. On the top you can see new icons, there's like an undo or an orientation icon, as well as a full screen icon and a line icon. On image 6, the final image that has been teased, we get a look at a fog inside of a small village. From the looks of it we also have some texture assets named TX in the resource browser. On the right we can also see that the assets placed down can be toggled on or off. 
uh, with an eye icon, making them maybe visible or invisible in the window. After puzzling them all together, it looks like an East European setting in a modern or a Cold War time zone. It all reminds me of Armour 2 or DC to be completely honest. Well, the Enfusion engine has already been on display and in use for DC, so seeing some assets reused or remodeled in this engine is only natural, I think. However, DC only makes use of Enfusion's rendering and animation system. They stated this in the 2019 recap blog. And I quote, and with these two complex parts in place, we believe we have crossed some of the biggest hurdles towards making a game that fully runs on Enfusion. Mind you, this was in 2019. Reported key characteristics of the Enfusion engine will be familiar for fans of the Armour series with detailed simulations, big open worlds, large scale multiplayer and modding but this time supported by a far more powerful dev tool and compatible with multiple gaming platforms. And I think this itself does not mean Arma is coming to PlayStation or Xbox, it just means that their proprietary game engine will allow for this to happen. Uh, we already know we have a few Bohemia titles on, on the console, uh, so this is only natural. Bohemia states that for our future games built on Fusion, we intend to fully empower the modding community with the inbuilt scripting language resembling C Sharp. It itself is called Enforce Script and it origins from the Enforce Engine, which has been developed by Bohemia Interactive alongside the Real Virtuality Engine. It's been developed for many years, so it's quite a proven solution. Armory uses SQF and it will continue to do that. And Bohemia wants Infusion to adopt pipelines that are largely in line with uh, industry standards. That way it will be easier for them to hire developers and for those developers to make a transition from something they're already familiar with, say like Unreal Engine. On top of that, Infusion aims to support open source greedy software tools. And this information is directly from their own blogs. DirectX 12 or RTX Bohemia has said that this is something they have been looking at. For most cases, screen space reflections and baked reflections are more than adequate in their own words. So it's very unlikely that any ARM of 4 or a title in the future will have ray tracing. Bohemia has been working on improving their engine and toolset to allow the community to create mods to their heart's content. And that's very much what we expect Bohemia to do. It's sort of the foundation. Certainly the, the scripting language itself uh, has seen many improvements since uh, real virtuality and the tools is said to also be much more improved. In their blog they said that 2020 would be the revolutionary year of Bohemia Interactive and they would introduce their new call technology and fusion. We know that in 20, 2019 and fusion managed to serve a large group of end users such as animators, scripters, designers and so on. For Bohemia that meant that dozens of people could use the engine to produce content, which then consequently accelerated the development of the engine itself as well as the tools being used. Further in the blog it states that the modder's mindset is very much present whilst de developing the engine. A recent feat made it possible to already script your own Infusion plugins and extensions. And I think that is really good news for any modder that is going to jump from real virtuality over to Infusion. Right now, the primary goal of Infusion is to have an internal game prototype ready by the end of this year. And we all know that didn't happen, or maybe it did, but we're, we, <laughs> we're not going to be able to see uh, the fruits of that because we all know COVID happened. It's been a different year for all of us and Bohemia Interactive had to adapt themselves. But now in 2021 I think we're seeing that they are ready to showcase the project and perhaps reveal the game prototype to more people. It's not unreasonable to think that there might be some big news coming this year. After all, on the 22nd of June it has been 20 years since Armour Cold War Assault 
also known as Operation Flashpoint, released. And I cannot imagine the companies letting this opportunity slip away. People who claim to have inside information can be very tempting to listen to. They show screenshots and they forward claims that the company themselves cannot dispute or at least discuss openly with the public. Often leakers seem to seek public recognition and want their time in the spotlight. Some of the claims posted by this particular leaker was already public information. For instance, the cancelled maps were Armour 3, an Australian map and a Nordic winter map was talked openly about by Jay Crow, former creative director at Bohemia, in one of their development blogs from 2015 about the NOAA. We started the process by thinking about what our basic goal was, and that, in short, was to create a fresh, new type of setting. With that in mind, our environment guys made three prototypes. We had a Nordic terrain, a slightly dry Australian arid terrain, and then Tanoa, sort of a lush, South Pacific island setting. After the whole team had the chance to play around in these locations, we allowed them to vote and discuss all the options, and ultimately the vast majority voted for the Pacific terrain. One of the leaks was the alleged name of the project, Armour Reforger. This is a claim that is hard to dispute. Reforger was a military exercise during the Cold War where the American forces would train return of forces to Germany. It was a military exercise that the Soviet Union did not like at all, it could be a code name for the project, just like Orange DLC turned out to be Laws of War back in the day. The more I think about it, when I watch all the CDLC being made in Armour 3 right now, Global Mobilization, CSLA, Iron Curtain, Sog Prairie Fire and so on, what does all of these things have in common? They all fit the same time period and they could be helping in laying down the groundwork for a new game in Infusion. In Exercise Reforger, there was a lot of military equipment that has been portrayed in all of these CDLC. Global mobilization is even located in East and West Germany. This makes me more confident in my guess of a Cold War in Eastern Europe. To further the claims, it's now officially documented that Bohemia has trademarked Arma Reforger as well as something called Silica. This was just a few days ago. And regarding the authenticity of the screenshots that has been revealed by the leaker, they may even be irrelevant because they could be taking, taken anywhere between 2015 and 2020. They are now taken down due to copyright infringement. So, does this mean Armour 4? No, out of anything available online, it does not lead to any confirmed Armour 4. As for the future of the Armour series, seeing how Bohemia was hiring for an unannounced AAA title in their job listings and just recently is hiring these positions to work from Prague, I think there is a game brewing. With the infusion technology, I think we will retain what makes Armour so great, the ease of modding and the easy use of tools for its fans and the community. Graphically, I don't think we will see a major jump but it will be a big improvement, especially with lighting and shading and animations. Furthermore, I think Armo is going back in time again, back to where it all started with Cold War Crisis, on a map that resembles something familiar like Chernarus. And the most important thing I think they are focusing on is the performance. I believe we will have a stable and well-performing game that utilizes the X12 and the PC components that are available today. That is all from me on the Infusion Engine and my thoughts about the future of Armour. Leave a comment about what you think, I'm happy to discuss this with you. Until next time, stay safe.